It is a notorious case that made national headlines. Famed serial killer Andrew Erdialis went on a murder spree in the late 80s, early 90s, killing seven women, five of them right here in Southern California. Erdy Alice was found dead in prison last year, about a month after being sentenced to death for those murders. Today, the sole survivor of his crime spree is detailing her escape in a new book. And joining us live in the studio now is Jennifer Asbenson, the author of The Girl in the Treehouse. Jennifer, thank you for being here, and thank you for being brave enough to come and talk about this and writing a book. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. So you met Andrew uh, when you were 19, is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. I was 19. I accepted a ride with him mm -hmm. to work, and he dropped me off at work. He came back the next morning and offered me a ride again. I accepted because I trusted him, mm -hmm. and he basically kidnapped me and took me into the desert and tortured me and planned on murdering me. but. I was put in the trunk and mm -hmm. driven down the road, and I escaped out of the trunk. Yeah, how, how did you manage? You were raped and tortured, so you had that to deal with already, and then you're in the trunk. How did you manage to get out of the trunk and escape? Well, my hands were behind my back, and I just remembered that my grandma told me a long time ago if I'm ever in a really bad situation to pray. And so I thought, okay. I'm going to try this because I had like no other option really and so I just prayed and after I prayed I just got just this overwhelming strength and I just busted all the twine off and then I used my imagination as I did as you'll see in the book I, when I was a child I would use my imagination a lot to see in the dark because mm -hmm we had no electricity and so I imagine what the inside of the trunk would look like if I could see it all lit up and I saw where I would be able to put my hands and open the mechanism in the trunk so I ripped it all apart and wow. found that and opened it and so he pulled over and when he pulled over he got stuck in the soft sands and then I jumped out and where right. were you at that point. It was in Desert Hot Springs, mm -hmm. and when I jumped out, we were on a paved road, but everything else took place in the desert. Mm -hmm. And you were able to run away and escape. So yeah. he chased after you? Oh, he did. He chased after me with a machete. Oh. Yeah. And so the first car that came by that I was like, help, help, yeah. they were like, no, no. They didn't want to help me because they were looking back and saw him yeah. chasing me with the machete, so they just left me. Uh, but another truck was coming towards me, and I just jumped in front of it, and they helped me. Has writing this book been therapeutic for you? Oh, my goodness, yes. It was so hard because when I was writing it, I lived in the treehouse because I felt safe, you know, because in the house, I just felt too vulnerable. But if I was in the backyard in the treehouse that's surrounded by a big wall that had some dogs in it, you know, I just felt safer. Your childhood was a little unusual, right? Very unusual. Yes, like like I said before, we lived in the middle of nowhere because my brother was handicapped and he would run away. So my dad had an idea to move where nobody else lived, um, out of civilization pretty much. We could see other houses, but we just basically moved our car and lived on the mountain while he built the house. We had no running water. We had um, no electricity, of course, until we eventually got it many years later. and. Um, I was given responsibility of my handicapped brother, and so he wouldn't run. I would keep him on a rope, tied around his waist, and keep him on it. And that's because of my childhood when my whole imagination came into play, which eventually saved my life. Yeah, for sure. Wow. Really quickly, what message are you trying to spread with this book? I really want to let... I, I have a real big problem with victimhood. And I think people are victims when they are being victimized. But once they're out of that situation, they are warriors. Mm -hmm. You know, they are rock stars. They are, they should have, should feel in themselves this superhuman strength to go out and take on the world because they conquered that. They're not in that anymore. And to stay in victimhood mm -hmm. and to live like that is kind of like, putting yourself in jail you know why would you want to do that you need to get out and live what a great message yeah thank you yeah. all right again the name of the book is uh the girl in the treehouse um and you've got a signing this weekend and also the proceed proceeds from the book are actually being donated 
to the American Cancer Society. Barnes and Noble and Westfield Mall and Palm Desert and a proceed uh, proceeds uh, portion of the proceeds will be donated. The Girl and the Treehouse. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank we you. really appreciate Good it. Luck. Great message. Thanks for telling your story. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome.